right, everybody. Hello and welcome to the Hi. Dielectric Media Podcast. I am Doug Schlobotnik. And I'm Frank Allen. I'm Baldwin. And... Yay. I have an idea for today's podcast. No, I don't like it. Waitresses. Oh, Jesus. Oh, whatever. Well, you point at me like, take it from here. <laughs> Well, no. You know, <laughs> we and last night your story about uh, uh, Frank's encounter. I think you were talking about silver, because you said church. When you said that he had to give fifty dollars to a oh. waitress. <laughs> oh yeah. Were you talking about silver? Or were you no. talking about Frank? Him. You Frank. actually go to church? I don't think he actually went to church. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's depressing. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but. <coughs> I mean, we've all had really shitty wait- waitresses, or well, I guess have you ever had a male waiter? Yes, yes, really. Yeah. I seriously have never. Yeah, yes, you have. you have. I've been to restaurants with you when there was yeah. a male waiter. So have I. Oh, are you talking about who hot? Yeah, it's still uh, a waiter. I don't count him. He just brought me one drink, he's and a, that was it. He's still a waiter. He doesn't mm-hmm. bring you food, but he. I'm thinking more like. Like Village Inn, IHOP, Chili's. Yeah, I've had male waiters. Yeah, that's it. Whenever I go there, it's always female waitresses because the guys are usually in the back making up food. Yes. Well, there are always going to be female waitresses. Yeah. There are never going to be female waiters, hopefully. Well, you never know. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, the idea is uh, do you enjoy. You know, do you feel just because we are the opposite sex <coughs> that you should tip more to a woman than you would a fe- uh, than a male? Is she hot? Is that does that matter? Yes, I think no. so considerably. I don't For think the it matters. the then mass majority retarded. of people, if she's would. hot, then I'm gonna tip more. If she's not, I yeah, don't care. Yeah, this isn't like a Asian fucking massage parlor where oh, I give you extra money, you give me happy ending. You know that shit ain't gonna roll down. No, but that's still how it works. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, pretty much. I mean, that's how Who Hot is so popular. Who Hot? My goodness. Uh, Hooters. Close Hooters. enough. Hooters Hot. <laughs> it's just. Although you know, like any know. strip joint, they do have their C plus squad, and wow, that can be terrifying. C section and bullet wounds all over the place. Bullet wounds. Yeah. From oh, their, it's bad. From their tour in Nam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, depending on if they met a guy named Nam, yes, then that would be it. Gross. But no, when we went uh, a long time ago, when I was a freshman, our first trip we took was to uh, the Mall of America, which is really, really bland. It's a not freshman in what? College. Okay. Yeah. Unless difference. you remember going to the Mall of America when we were No, that's I was expecting a foray into California, but no. Nope. Uh, no, no. Mall of America is in Minnesota, man. I fucking know where the Mall of America <laughs> is. <laughs> that's why I was confused. But anyways... No, we went to the Mall Kay. of America, and unless you have, like, $150 that you're willing to just, like, burn, that it's just worthless. It's a worthless store. But they do have a lot of good shit in there. Like, they had a big retro gaming center. I think it was, like, the only one in the entire store, and it was located three miles away from your entrance. I mean, and it's just a big, it's a big fucking stadium, as might as well as be. It's, I think, three stories... But instead of, like, the usual 10 feet, it's, like, 15 or 20. So you get a story and a half, pretty much, for each level. And then, because in the middle, they have the big roller coasters and water park and all that other shit. Then it has a bunch of restaurants on the outside. And we went to, uh, we saw that there was a Hooters. So we all decided to go to the Hooters because it was a couple of our buddies' birthdays. And they had the old squad out that day. Oh. It's like they had the... I'm 50 years old and still think I'm hot, so I can wear this low-cut tank top. And it was it was terrifying. It was sad. That it's disgusting. You it know is. how you solve that problem? What? Don't go to Hooters. Well, no. I mean, like, the west <laughs> of the... Wa- the west? Wow, Jesus. The rest of the waitresses were actually, you know, like, mid-20s, so they were at least acceptable. But it's like, 50 years old, it's kind of like when we worked at St. Louis and we had our female manager like to get drunk all the time. She always wear low cut tank tops, and you were like, "Please put them away." I mean, it's great you're trying to contribute to society in some means, probably by scaring off little children from sex for a while. But just keep, just keep them hidden. Keep them well hidden. I mean, like, 
wear a fucking turtleneck and everything will be solved. But I don't know. When it comes to that, I mean, even if they're nice, it's like you're you're trying a little too hard to still appeal to the horror horror uh, atmosphere of Hooters. So, which apparently is a family restaurant. Don't forget about that. Yeah, I was a little disturbed the first time I went there. It was on Halloween too, so the costumes Ooh. were extra skimpy. Yeah. But uh, a- <laughs> but there were like fucking families with little kids and shit, and I was like, oh really? Well, Pussy for the whole family. That's what we're gonna do now. That's well, fucking gross. I'm, uh, I don't remember. Take who. Take your daughter to the strip club day. <laughs> That's daddy's work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Depending on who your dad is, but no, nah, I, I can't remember which comedian said it, but uh, they were like, you know, for uh, for a woman to get ready for Halloween, the only thing you have to do is add naughty to any costume when you have that woman's costume. Because you can literally put it in front of anything. Even Naughty Sumo Wrestler. I guarantee you, somewhere on the fucking interwebs, there is a Naughty Sumo Wrestler outfit. Gross. Yes, it is. It'd be really fucking nasty. Just get rid of Halloween. Solve that problem. No, Good because luck with you'll that. still have people who want to dress up in costumes any day of the year. Anime kids. But maybe. there's less of them. That's cosplay. That's different. No, not even cosplay. They're, like I've told you before, the people that wear their fucking cat ears and their cat tail. There's one chick who dressed up as fucking Pikachu. Pikachu! It was like the middle of September. She dressed up as fucking Pikachu. I think what we call that being <laughs> crazy. Well, that's not crazy. That's like, I'm attention hungry, and if nobody's looking at me, then I don't feel like my attention is well deserved. That's like it. And I know I know who this chick was because she was in my uh, she was in my speech class last fall semester, and she's she's a she's the type of fat that just becomes round because she's not tall at all, mm. and her body just becomes you know violet. You're becoming violet, and she just bubbles out, and Gross. she's just a ball of a human being. And she would sit in class, and she'd sit right in the front middle desk. And since she never wore shirts that actually covered her and pants that never held up, huh. it was kind of like Humpty Dumpty falling off the wall every time she sat down. <laughs> Where you'd see that ass crack and you'd go, ah! You know, it was wonderful. That's unpleasant. <laughs> it was like Medusa's like fucking stare at you and you're just like, ah! And you turn to fucking stone because that's pretty much the only, <laughs> that's the only thing you want to happen to you. Either that or you want your dick to just shrivel up and fall off. Either one would be acceptable. But, and then she would sit, she'd sit at the front of the classroom, and she would just, she would tell stories. Like, and it's nice to tell stories every now and again, but it's like a mixture of curt stories with just even worse ramblings. It's like, one time I would sit at the breakfast table at my high school, and my friends and I would sit at the exact same table every day. But then there was one time where these people sat at our table and we didn't know what to do. It was a perplexing situation. Wow. Like, really wow. (laughs) Like, if you made that story up, I would believe it. But, since I don't care, and nobody else does. Like, it was in context to, I think we were talking about situational awareness or something it was it was something about speech and how you should observe your surroundings and how you feel more comfortable with people that you know versus people that you don't know and well somehow, bullshit that's fucking bullshit uh, not really more I mean, comfortable with people you know i don't think so to speak in front of them no yeah we're comfortable speaking in front of each other whatever we aren't i'd say I, i'm way more comfortable with people i don't know than people i do know See, I can give a speech in front of anybody. I don't give a... Fuck, I gave a speech about sucking dick in an alley to a bunch of people I'm probably never, ever going to see again. Like, that's... See, that's the the best thing. You you give that speech and then you're gone forever. Yeah, exactly. What'd you say? That's that's what I was saying. You're never going to see him again, so... Well, and it's like... <clears throat> like, you're probably going to see me again, and I'll just make you feel like an idiot forever. Because you <laughs> you're that guy. <laughs> you're that one guy who's sucking dick in an alley. Cool. Like, that's kind of who <laughs> I became from that class, because now every now and again I'll see guys from my speech class and be like, dude, didn't you say you suck, that you would suck dick for marijuana in an alley? I said, no, 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 that was part of my speech. and It wasn't marijuana, it was cocaine. So. <laughs> the convoluted trail of storytelling there. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Well, <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, there there's just some people out there who, when they give it a good try, they really do. But they don't. They really just need to just... They either need to write in their fucking journal or their blog, whatever the fuck they do nowadays, and they need to leave it to the people who want to actually listen to them. If they gave you good service at a restaurant, would you <coughs> tip them any different? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so disproving what you said earlier. Not really. <laughs> you ever gone to a Perkins? Yeah. Have you ever had shitty waiter but really good food? Yeah. Have you ever had the opposite? Yes. Now, would that would you tip any different? Or tip different people? No, would you tip if if the service was good but the food was bad? Would you tip different from the service being bad and the food being good? I would <coughs> tip less to the waitress and more to the cooks. Yeah, but would you say? Okay, no, here's no, no, the deal. The here's the deal. Here's how tipping works. Tipping works based on how relatable the server was and how well they served you. Exactly. That's it. But you know, some people blame the waiter staff for the food. Because they're dumb. They're exactly. stupid. So, well, that's my whole thing. It's like when we get tipped at our place, the whole thing about it is is that we're getting tipped on how fast we can make your food and how well it looks at the end. Well, we no, we get tipped on whether or not they realize that jar is actually yeah. a tip jar. That too. But <laughs> we can't, since we can't put the word tips on it. But, and, and some I'm probably going to start doing hint. that and just taking it off whenever a... Uh, GM or... I'll just put it on when I'm working. How about that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That'll work. I, oh, I bet it will. I'll but, try it next time. Tomorrow. That's another thing that I, I guess I forgot to bring up. Those mints we have, we just have a bucket of mints sitting at the front. Now, do you remember when you were a kid and you saw a bucket of mints? What the fuck did you do? Mine. You took a handful. And that's what's like... That, that one short, fat girl that comes in who still owes us a fucking dollar... She came in, and three of her friends just emptied that fucker. Like, what are you doing with that many peppermint mints? Are you going home and making schnapps or something? <laughs> fucking Christ. I don't think that's how it works. Uh, well, you can add peppermint to schnapps and make it peppermint schnapps. You should put a sign that says, please take one. I put a sign that says, I don't really give a shit on it, because I really don't give a shit. No. Well, They're not my mints. I don't give a fuck. What I was thinking was I just like we them. put it behind the counter and with everybody who gets the sandwich, we throw them in it. Easy enough. It's like what they do at a any other like restaurant where they put the mint. I think the, you're overanalyzing a situation that doesn't really fucking matter at all. You didn't pay for the mints. You don't give a shit know. about the mints. Do I you give a shit about the mints because that's, that's a lot of fucking mints. Who gives a crap? I do. Why? Because that's a lot of mints. Who cares? It's pointless. It's just fucking mints. But it's mints. Oh my god, that's the point. It's just mints. Yeah. Who cares? Who I cares? Do. No I one. Do. You're the only person ever. Exactly. We're ending this. Do you get bonuses for like food costs and no. stuff? No. Then it doesn't matter. We do, so we care. The manager. Well, Godfathers does. The manager gets <laughs> bonuses. Yes. Yeah. No one else does. Yeah. So <laughs> if since nobody gets bonuses, nobody should care. And no one does, except for one idiot. Don't give me that look. I'm giving you that look. So, we're moving on to something else that isn't going to be stupid. Uh, Actually, it's going to be hilarious. That isn't going to be stupid. So, Baldwin and I went to GameStop a couple of days ago. Uh Uh-oh. Gross. Am I supposed to remember this? Because I'm having a really hard time. You remember it. You know what's better than GameStop? Steam. No. What? (laughs) Steam (laughs) Summer Sale was the greatest thing of all time. Yeah, but try selling back a game to Steam. Don't need to. I buy good games for like two bucks Wrong. each. Eventually, you're going to never play it again and then wish you could have sold it back. But then you sell a game and then you want to play it and then you don't have it. Well, then you got to buy it again. That didn't happen yeah. to me. That's <laughs> happened to I me. Sold back. Like six times with Orange Box. That's different. That game's good. The games that I sold back, I really, I'm not ever going to want to play Fallout 3, I know, is always going to be mine. Anyway. But, you yeah. went to GameStop. So... Uh, you sold back Reach and Rock Band 2. Yes. And how much money did you get? Oh, hey. Uh, hold on. I got it in my wallet. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Is it going to be just nothing? Pretty it's much. It's going to be hilarious. I mean, it's it's equivalent to less than what you would think it would be. No, 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 no. It's You you expect the amount from Reach. So tell the total. Well, it's a little worn. 
All right, the total is seventeen dollars and ninety three cents. All right, and how much came from Reach? Seventeen fifty. Nope, seventeen sixty. And how much came from Rock Band? Wow, thirty three cents. Thirty three fucking cents. I was gonna say I got like two bucks, and I sold mine like two years ago. Yeah, yeah. I got nothing. And I had money on my cards, so now yeah. I have twenty dollars and fifty nine cents on it. I I I traded in Battlefield three and Reach, and I paid off uh, Borderlands two. You guys sold Reach? Yes. Why? You guys were so into that game. I'm never going to play it again. Yeah, I mean, I kind of ran dry with it. Just because I I kind of stopped playing it. Because once I got Amazing Spider-Man, that happened. And I finally weaned myself off of Reach. And then I got Dave Sex. And then that was another step beyond that. And then I got Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Oh. Which was another step beyond that. Sorry, I gagged a little bit. I, yeah, and I, I got... Um, Lollipop Chainsaw, which I still haven't finished, and Fallout New Vegas, which I also still haven't finished, and I'm like 50 hours deep into New Vegas right now, <laughs> and I've had it for like a week, maybe two. I was gonna say I think we gonna have two weeks, Sam. Yeah, but and I <laughs> yeah, and I've dumped fucking 50 hours into that bitch. Well, shit, I've dumped about that much into Deus Ex, but that's because. That type of game requires you to just be an explorer beyond belief. I mean, they, they reward you. Fuck, when you're in China, they reward you for opening up closets, going in, you get 100 experience points. And there's like 20 doors, so you can get 2,000 points. Exciting. It is. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's real exciting. I went into a closet 20 times. And then I found yeah. Typhoon Ammo and Stun Gun Darts and Peps Energy and Energy Bars and all this other shit. I mean, you find stuff by exploring, obviously. It's one of those no, games really? that's always been explorer-friendly, like Fallout. You know, where you you don't always take the direct path, because obviously it's not the easiest. Yeah. <coughs> right, I'm on the last of the DLC for Fallout. Which one's that? Well, I don't know what order they go in. No, I mean, like, what's the, what's the name? Um... I don't know what its name is, but I know it's in Zion National Park. Ah, I got no clue. Yeah, there's there's Old World Blues, the Sierra Madre one, the big... Oh, fuck. What's... I don't remember the other one. Lonesome Dove. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's well, there's Old World Blues, then the Sierra Madre quest, then there's the one that I'm on now, and there was one more in between there that I don't really remember. <coughs> but it was fucking hard. Remember that? <laughs> that how fucking ridiculous it was. I mean, but yeah, I the difficulty, the difficulty on Fallout New Vegas obviously is kind of a step and a half ahead of what Fallout Three's difficulty was. Oh, and there's a whole lot more going on with it too. Yeah, I mean the map's kind of almost just as big. I mean it's not as convoluted because you don't have the Washington downtown district where it's like. You have to take a specific path, otherwise you'll run into a fucking dead end. Yeah, and then you're God, just it sucked. done. Well, yeah, and then you gotta either fucking fast travel or you have to backtrack. Well, and, uh, and I got the uh, the perk that lets you see everything on the map, on yeah. every single map, and it, it was fucking crazy. Like, the whole map is just shit that I haven't seen. It's just <laughs> packed. Oh, the Divide. That's the other one. The That's divide. the one I just finished. So yeah, you got the one where you go to the old casino. You got the one where you go to the uh, big empty, which is old world blues. That one, that was fucking hard. It pissed me off a lot. And then you got the one in the divide where you're fighting the other courier, and then the one I'm on now in Zion National Park. And It'll eventually come back to you what the name of it is. I don't really care. But no, I mean. Uh, I read something last night on Yahoo News about how the gaming industry is kind of taking a big blow because of recent sales and how big the gap is for, um, you know, this generation of consoles and how it's, well, this is the longest expansion that's ever been around. It's like, well, yeah, because we have amazing technology at our hands and we're still trying to unlock the potential of it. I mean, there's been big talk about the Unreal Engine 4, which is just an even grander step in the direction of not only better graphics and better gameplay but just overall just what we want from our games because we are gamers we want <clears throat> we want that feel of actually being in the game because when we started out as being kids 
We just wanted not to die. That was the whole point. That's why they gave us lives in those games, because yeah. we didn't want to die. And when we lost life, we got really fucking pissed Every off. Every game was the same. It was you get three tries for the whole fucking game, exactly. and if you fail, you're done. That's why they gave you cheat codes eventually, too. Yeah, to so tell you, you go that, insane. Yeah. And then when the next generation of consoles came out, the N64 and the PlayStation 1, it was more geared towards uh, multiplayer. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of those games, a lot of them that came out, racing games, fighting games. I mean, you still had your... <coughs> you was had still your, in the advent of the first-person shooter, too. Yeah. And even then, I mean, it, those were rarer because they started out with the multiplayer games. Because uh, I'm looking at your N64 right now. It has four ports. PlayStation only has two, but you, then you would buy those... Uh, expanders. Uh, expanders, so you could have four. And that'd be really awesome for, like, Twisted Metal and all that shit. And now... So everybody could have one-tenth of the screen. (laughs) Well, and that's the thing, is that, you know, with the generation after that, they pushed... They saw the potential in first-person shooters and RPG games, and they pushed more towards that. And that's what happened to Xbox and PlayStation 2 and not... Well, I guess GameCube was mainly your RPG home center, while... PlayStation 2 was your action RPG, and then you had uh, Xbox, which was first-person shooter. That's kind of how those genres broke down. Because if you think about it, a lot of the Xbox games, besides Halo, weren't really that good. Because you could either buy them on PlayStation 2 or you could not just buy them because they weren't as popular. Because Halo was doing things right. They were doing They were doing what games needed to do. And now with this new genre of games, I mean, when Bioshock came out, it was the next step up. It was that game that a lot of people saw. It's like, holy shit, they just kind of pushed the bar up above our heads. We don't know how the fuck we're going to get over it now. And now that bar is moved back down. But then you've heard about games like Dishonored and Bioshock Infinite. And even though Dishonored is its own game, Bioshock Infinite in itself is also its own game. I mean, it just shares the same title. The first, it shares the same first word as the first game that came out. And yes, it's by the same guy, but it's not only is it kind of, it's a completely different story, but they're also how you get powers, how you move around. The city itself is a completely different atmosphere. <clears throat> so when people call Bioshock Infinite a sequel, I think it's like, no, it's kind of, it's a step. It's another step in a direction that we should be moving. Because with, you know, when you read a book from an author, and it leaves you breathless, or it leaves you scared, or it leaves you leaving the book with, like, anticipation for what he's going to write next, you want that next book to top the book you just read. Because that's how we as humans work. We want the next biggest, better thing. No, I disagree with that. Well, 100% disagree with that. Think about phones People do not want the next biggest thing. They want the same shit. That's why there's 11,000 Harry Potter books that are not better than the next one. They're well, all the same shit. That's why there's fucking Twilight, which is all the same shit. That's why there's Call of Duty, which is all the same shit. But that's and there's and, Halo. Yeah, which is all the same shit. shit. But now it's turning into Call of Duty, so it's but people turning are getting into more dry of the same of that shit. Now. People are just getting No, but that's I totally it. disagree with what you said. People do not want the next greatest thing. I do. Intelligent people want the next greatest well, thing. Yeah, I'm sorry. People, people who want to do further not society. want the next greatest thing. Yeah. They don't give a shit. They want to graze on the same blade of grass that they just had. Yeah, but the problem is nobody's going to admit that. Those in- unintelligent... Un- if you've bought every Call of Duty since COD 4... I haven't. <laughs> then, so, I mean, the games I buy are because... Same thing with Halo. You know? I've bought all of them. Yeah, I bought... I bought three, and I bought Reach. You were the only two I've three. ever had. What? You never bought three. Yeah, I did. I had, didn't. A, I had my own copy, and then it broke. Right. That was... You fun. played my copy the entire time I ever played yours. Well, that was the multiplayer copy that I had. Yeah. I'm talking about the actual campaign that I finally fucked finished. That wasn't yours. That was your brother's. No. I bought my own copy. Why? Because it was like five bucks, and I'm like, I finally need to fucking beat this <laughs> the game itself, because I had never actually beaten it. And that was that was my sophomore year back when I when I had my brother's Xbox, the one that didn't work. And I tried to make it work. 
Yeah. You don't remember that? Cause I no. Didn't, so. But you're, you're totally convoluting everything. <laughs> you just recently finished the game. Yeah. Well, that's because I had to borrow my brother's Halo 3 disc. That's exactly what I said. Yeah, I'm talking about when I first bought Halo 3. It didn't work because it had a crack in it. Uh. And the disc itself. Because I don't know what fucking happened to it, but it suddenly got a huge crack in it, which really kind of pissed like me off. like my Black Ops copy. Just well, I didn't break magically. it by getting it out of the... Well, didn't your cat hit your Xbox? No. Uh, that was Modern Warfare 2. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. But, A I mean, grand sacrifice. <laughs> for the greater good? Yes. Yeah. No, but that's the thing. You know, I, I, I guess I should retract some of my statement by saying the people who want to see something better, the intelligent folks around who play video games because they want to see something better, and the people who read books and and want something from that author, the intelligent folks who don't believe that President Obama is to blame for for everything in this country, you know... Whatever. The, the point <clears throat> is, is that people and the sales from the companies state this. People do not want new, innovative shit. They want the no. same shit over and over and over and over and over. And, you know, for people who... I mean, Modern Warfare, or no, <laughs> I guess Black Ops 2, has, it's like the highest selling game in history, and it hasn't even been finished. Yeah. Well. Because people know exactly what the fuck it's going to be, and so they already just lined up to buy years it. later, yeah. It's going to be, and Spec Ops The Line, you know, when that game came out, it was the third person over the shoulder shooter, and... It did what I kind of want from games with the story, because I read into the story figuring I'm never going to ever fucking play it, but with the story, it was really fucking cool. It was twisted in a sense, but it was really cool, and I liked what See, they I did. See, I never do that. I never read stories on games that I'm not going to play, because if I'm not going to play it, I don't care. Well, I was interested in the game, because I had heard other people's reviews about it, and so I was like, I'm never going to buy it, but I might as well look into it. That's yeah. what I kind of do with some games, because I'm like... It's like movies that I'm never going to see because I don't want to shell out money for it. Because I'm like, I know this is going to be bad, but I want to see what the story is. You know? It's like people... And Oh, by the way, uh, The Watch got really bad reviews from a lot of people. Is that out? Yeah, it came out this past... It uh, came out yesterday. No. Friday. Yeah, anything that has Vince Vaughn in it, I'm instantly less giving a shit about it. Well, the problem is it wasn't Vince Vaughn's complete fault. It was Ben Stiller. Uh, I think they used the word every man because he was trying to be that. I I don't remember how they... Jonah Hill is not funny anymore. Well, Jonah Hill didn't even fucking get mentioned in this review. I don't give a shit. He's like, not funny anymore. <coughs> like Adam Sandler. Yeah, Adam well, Sandler has a funny but that's different. Jonah Hill is a funny fat kid. Yeah. He is not a funny skinny kid. But it, it, the only problem is that now he's kind of reverting back to his old self. Like, he's gained weight, obviously. If You you can tell that. I don't and, give a shit. But the problem is is that they're planning on making a sequel to 21 Jump Street. Ugh. And I'm like, what the fuck are they going to do? That movie kind of ended the way it did. Uh, you guys haven't seen it yet, I take it, so. I don't really give a crap. I'm People are so dumb with creating things anymore. Yeah. Oh, well, nobody's this... original. Well, a, a movie ends perfect. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Flawless. Oh, well, let's make some more money and make another movie that links to it. Why can't you just be happy with the product that you made and make something else? Because they think they can build it. Because it's easy it. to it's sell stupid. the same thing. Yeah. It's I hard to stupid. sell something new. And it's, when just, it's hard to do. <clears throat> it's hard to get people interested in something they know nothing about. Yeah. If you say, like, Harry Potter number 45, people are going to be like, oh, I know what this is, so I'm going to go see it. They're comfortable with it. It's really hard to make people comfortable with going to a movie that they know nothing about. Like Batman, people are swarming to that thing because they know what it's going to be. The Avengers, people went to it in droves because they knew what it was going to be. Well, and you expected something from it. You wanted you wanted that authentic feel with the Avengers. You wanted badass fight scenes. And what did you get? Badass fight right. scenes. But then you get people like J.J. Abrams who are doing different things that are a little more unique and people don't really go to those no. because they don't know what's going to happen. They don't know what they're going to get out of because it. They don't they, know what to expect. They can't just watch TV and figure out the whole movie from there. You know. Well, that's what I mean, people want to know what they're going to see. They want to know that they're going to spend their money well. Nicely. 
and well, making something new and unique is not a good way to sell anything. But then <clears throat> the problem is, is that then it comes out and then people are like, oh, shit, this is really good. Why didn't I buy it? And then they get really pissed off at the gaming company because it's like or the movie company or whatever company they're getting pissed off at. Because they're like, why didn't you tell me more about it? It's like, uh, because we didn't want to ruin the experience. Crazy thought here. That's like putting the spoilers for a book right at the fucking beginning. By the way, Snape dies. That's the entire sixth book. Just fuck it. First page. One sentence. Snape dies. Dumbledore dies. That's, that's it. I mean, what the fuck? There's no... You don't expand upon the characters. You don't feel something for your characters. So what the fuck is the point in... And even going to it, like like you said, with the Call of Duty series, you don't feel anything for any of those characters. When you watch that story or anything, you're just like, okay, I just want to get to the next fight scene. That's what most people are nowadays. It's just, I yeah. want the next thing. I want the next fight scene. I want shit to blow up and like bang, bang. When, and shoot, when Soap shoot. died, whatever. I, the Call of Duty campaign, I couldn't care less. Yeah. But Metro 2033 is very similar with... Yeah. It's very progressive, but I care more about it. Right. Well, Mainly because there's, your story there's no multiplayer to it. So it's not like, oh, I got to go shoot people now. It's an actual good <laughs> story. Yeah. When you played when you played Halo Reach, tell me one character, well, besides the one character we each actually kind of felt for, for in the Noble Six, but hmm. we can all yeah. agree upon one thing. We did not care when Cat died. I've always hated the Halo campaigns. Just going to say that. Well, uh, the second Halo campaign's cool, and the third one I kind of liked, besides the slow-moving segments where everything's, like, really stretched out and, like, you're on an acid trip walking down a corridor while uh, Cortana. uh, Cortana's talking to you. Uh, I don't know what the fuck that was about, but that was really fucking annoying. Just in the middle of a battle, it'd be like, oh, by the way, you need to go pick up eggs and milk. (laughs) Fuck you! I don't want to... I don't care! Just let me play. I don't want middle of action sequences. It's like in Gears of War when all of a sudden you'd be running and then it's like, oh man, big battle. Hold on, I have to talk on my earpiece for a second and move at the speed of a piss. It's like, no, I don't want that. <laughs> like, I know you're trying to entice the story into gameplay, but don't do not do that, man. Don't really do that. I mean, that's why you have cutscenes. And Kratos, he never stopped to talk to Athena in the middle of a battle. No, he fucking killed everybody, and then he turned with Dina, called her a cunt, and continued on with this, with this fucking story. There wasn't no, like, <laughs> hold on, I have to talk to the snake on the ground while the Minotaur's right behind me shoving his axe up my ass. You know, uh, that shit didn't happen. I don't really care about that shit. That's. I just hate when the cutscenes look way different. Like Deus Ex. Makes me want to puke. Little Square Enix, come on. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Their their graphics engine is Japanese. It wins. It looks really good, but they're it looks like you're watching a movie in cutscenes. Just make it look like the game. I yeah, but there's a well. The problem is is that during the cutscene, they know specifically where where the camera's gonna be, who, who's talking, how they're talking, and everything. When you get back to the game, it's like in Kingdom Hearts. You ever play Kingdom Hearts? Nope. There were times where it's like during the awesome cutscene, they would switch back to their shitty graphics. I'm like, why? You just had this really great cutscene, and it's kind of like just throwing a bucket of paint on on this fucking Leonardo masterpiece. You're like, wh- why? <laughs> why did you do that? You went from him talking with his mouth to him looking like he's eating a mouthful of peanut butter, and he's talking. You know? Yeah, be- I don't know. <laughs> I don't really. I don't like the the cutscenes that are all. Fancy and pretty. Prettified. Yeah. I, I just like it to look like what it's looked like the whole rest of the fucking game. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what God yeah. of War 3 was. God <laughs> of War 3 did that. You know, there was no... Uh, besides... I mean, I if your graphics suck that bad that you want to make your cutscenes look way better, then maybe you need to bump up your graphics a little better. And, you know, I don't know how that works. I really don't. If they have a legitimate reason for it, Go ahead. Fine. If you have a legitimate reason. But God of War 3, they had the gameplay and the cutscenes were the exact same. They both looked fucking good. Mm-hmm. There amazing. was no... Uh, they were amazing, yeah. And it was great to watch it because it was... Besides the fact that 
even tearing off Helios's head at the fucking beginning. That was awesome. And that was a cut scene and a quick time event. Ugh. Then you climb up a Titan and you're like, oh my goodness. Quick and then you fucking event. kill the shit out of everything on a Titan. And he's climbing <laughs> up to uh whatever Mount Olympus. Mount Olympus. Yeah. You're like The fight. crazy. The the one thing that I don't like about Lollipop Chainsaw is that it's basically a big old quick time event. Yeah. All the boss battles, three stages. You know, your average three-stage boss battle, quick time events all over the fucking place. Good God. Just Uh, annoying. That's another mechanic that they need to get away from. Or if they use it, use it very rarely. Like in God of War, you had a lot of quick time events. No, 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 no. That's even worse. Because then you end up with Battlefield 3 where it's like doing something, doing something. Random ass fucking quick time event out of nowhere that you fail and then you got to do it all over again. I hate that. Because every time (laughs) I see a cutscene, I just... Put my controller down, lean back, yeah, and watch it. And then it goes, oh, X. <laughs> it's like, oh, shit. Ah, oh, I hit Y. <laughs> and and I, watch the whole thing again. Yeah, and did then you, you drop your controller. and. Uh, I know you haven't played Resident Evil 4. Did you play Resident Evil 4? I played 5. You played 5? Yeah. Uh, they probably had the same quick time events. It would be the same exact thing, which you guys just said. You'd be in the middle of a, a movie cut scene, and then it's like, press left. What? <laughs> and then your head gets chopped off. <laughs> I probably clipped there. <laughs> but... It was like, are you fucking serious? Like, why do you do that? That's just torture. Where it's just or at least it's not like fucking uh, Force Unleashed, where the quick time oh. event for the bringing down the Death or Star Destroyer was wrong. Opposite. <laughs> so when you're looking at it to telling what when it's telling you what to do, you're just like, all right, I'm doing this. Why am I failing? What's happening here? Well, the and one then thing- you ha- realize, like, oh, it's wrong. I got to do, like, I just have to ignore it and just do what I feel should happen. Yeah. And I think they fixed it eventually, but with a patch and everything. Uh, not but- when I played it, because I played yeah. that thing, like, 45 times, and I kept dying, and I was getting so pissed off, because I didn't know what to do. I was like, what's wrong? How is this not working? There's a good reason why those are there. They just execute it very poorly. Yeah. I mean, it was a cool scene and all, because it was fucking cool. Bringing down a Star Destroyer? Yeah. The only thing that sucked about that battle is when they would send the fucking... Uh, the TIE the, Fighters at the, you. The TIE Fighters, yeah. That was annoying. Because it's like, I just... And then the ship would go right back to where it was, because yeah. it took too long. I'd be like, fuck this! I just want to... Fuck! Just bring down the Star Destroyer! I don't give a shit about these TIE Fighters. Yeah, it, it was <sighs> a really, really cool idea that they shit all over. Yeah. They just they just shit all over it. And the difficulty was if if that's a if that's what a Jedi had to go through, I feel sorry for all of them. Well, I mean they were trying to make it seem like you are a Jedi. Didn't feel like that way to me. What'd you feel like? I kinda felt like a small boy on a playground <laughs> getting my ass handed to me. Well what you played on like the super duper hard difficulty? Yeah. And I had all my powers upgraded, by the way. All of them. Everything was upgraded, and I was still getting my ass handed to me. <laughs> See, I remember playing the uh, the PSP version of it with you, yeah, and being able to do the the multiplayer shit. That was kind of fun. It was fun, but it got really boring because we'd only do one mode. Yeah, and it was who could force lightning or push the fastest. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, uh, and it's just like, and, and then we'd get locked into the uh, button mashing part where it's like. Just slam the fucking X button as fast as you can. Yeah. And, well, you know, that's why games that did the whole uh, uh, earlier games that did big battles where you'd play as an android and every now and again you got to play as a Jedi, those games really capitalized on the idea that when you were uh, a Jedi... Like Battlefront? Yeah. Like when being a Jedi was like, oh my god, I am Jesus. Yeah, but you only got him once in a while, once in a blue fucking moon. And when you did, you kind of conquered. But yeah. you had to be smart about how you played as that Jedi, because if you weren't, you'd easily get hand- your ass handed to you. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, in this game... Well, I, I really wish I would have gotten a little deeper into Knights of the Old Republic. Is that, that was one that was like one of the first Xbox games I ever played. And I had never really done much RPGs outside of Pokemon. So it was kind of like throwing me into the fucking wolf's den. It was bad. Well... <clears throat> and it's just, I mean, we could talk about how there hasn't been a proper Star Wars game in a long time. Because really, it's kind of like a proper superhero game. 
it's hard to find it and it's hard to make it because there's going to be there's that wide expansive audience out there who read the comics religiously who always are on the internet i mean they're always looking up information and they're always putting more ideas into their head about this is what i want so when a game comes out and it's not what they want they get really pissed off Which and is, then they start hating yeah. yeah well whatever i mean that's a totally different crowd you yeah know, you can't please those people because every person has their own idea of that particular character. That's why I like games where it's just all made up bullshit that is brand fucking new. Yeah, don't make a comic a game. Make yeah. them separate, please. Because it's <clears throat> just you're just you're setting yourself up for failure. Yeah, you I mean, might as well just make a character that you have no relation with before the point. Well, and, and then even you then, can make them fall in love with them uh, as you go. I don't know. It's just. There are a lot of things wrong with what needs to be done. Obviously, I mean, it's once again going back to the idea that the people who want, you know, better everything versus people who just want the same shit. It's obviously, it's the 1% versus the 99. And I know oh, those statistics Jesus have been thrown Christ, around. You don't want to get into that. I know. I'm just saying. I don't care about hipsters. I don't care about people who think they deserve something even though they've done nothing their entire life. Nor have they contributed anything to society. So the fact that they think they deserve anything from anybody is <laughs> ridiculous. Well, I know there's there was this really great poster that I saw on the interwebs that uh, was saying like, "Do you have money in your bank account and in your pocket at the same time with a little to spare? You're more wealthy. You're in the eight percent of the wealth of the whole world." Exactly. I, if you have any money at all that you can save, that you can say that you have saved, you're in the eight fucking percent of the entire world. That's because there are some countries where if they made $7.25 an hour, they'd be millionaires because they work forever. Yeah. Like they get one hour sleep breaks. <laughs> yeah, but I mean like, uh, and being able, if if you're healthier than you are sick, I mean, you're better off than a huge percentage of the world. Exactly. And I don't remember the exact number, but a huge number of people won't even live to the end of the week. And you're probably going to make it that far. <laughs> it is, yeah. there's, you don't deserve anything. If, you're, no. if you have fucking a box to live in. You're doing a lot better than some fucker in Africa with, you know, AIDS coming out their ass and flies living on the well, water in their eyes. When mosquitoes die when they bite your blood, <laughs> you're winning. Well, you're actually losing, and at the same time, you're winning, if you could think of that. But yeah, I, I just hate the people who think they're obligated. Yeah. And that it, they're born with the right to have whatever it is they want. So you're not born with the right for anything. You're you're born to the right to live your life. That's it. That's it, because where you live depends on how you live, and that's just how it rolls. There's no there's no exception to the rule, in this scenario because it's just if you're born in America, you're given the rights of an American. If you're born in England, you're born you're born into the rights of how they live. If you're born in Africa, you're born to the rights of how they live. You cannot change that because you are yet one single fucking cell. In the mass that has lived the same way for so long, like for us, we've only been around for two hundred and some odd years. Yeah, but that, <laughs> that's why I hate um, governments like communism and democracy who think that everyone should be communist or a democracy. A democracy. <laughs> so you should just back the fuck off and let people do what the hell they want. Exactly, and you know you can't. Oppressing these countries, uh, first off, our country's in a shit shamble. So what the fuck makes us think that we have the right to go over and tell somebody else that they're doing it wrong? That that that's not only being a hypocrite, but it's also just being an asshole, well, plain like, flat out asshole. I, I I'm not for like really really strict gun re uh, regulations, and I'm not for being able to you know have whatever gun you want. I really don't care about that stuff. Oh. Um, and I've seen a lot lately, especially about like gun control and shit. 
But honestly, since when has a criminal given a shit about the law? Well, that's the thing. Making a law to make it so criminals can't have guns. Do you think they fucking care? Well, you know, everyone that <laughs> commits a crime with a gun always has a license. Oh, as yeah. Of right well, now. exactly. It's just yeah. like they went to the these people <laughs> who are committing gun crimes aren't lawfully getting their weapons. No. Oh. And if they are, they're gonna find another way to do it once you take away that. Yeah, if right. It, as we it's, if you want to call it, we live in this country where you can buy anything off the internet. Anything you want, bombs. There is probably a website out there that will build you a plastic bomb and send it to your house, or tell you how to make it. Exactly, you can do anything. <coughs> and finding a gun nowadays, Jesus Christ, is so easy. You can. But I mean, seriously, <laughs> like, since when has a criminal given a shit? About the legal is the, the how legal something is to do. Like they don't no. care. It, no. By making it illegal, you're not gonna stop them from getting a gun. Well, it's like prohibition. <laughs> right. Nothing changed at all. No, no. Well, they went inside. The only I, thing that changed was you pretty much opened the door for criminals to get really fucking rich, because that well, was the only way to get booze. So. They when, just get all the money. When you take something away from somebody, what's the first thing you're going to try and do? Figure out the best and efficient way that they can get something. Right. It's that easy. If you took video games away from us, we would start thinking of fucking mastermind. Like, we as humans are brilliant when necessary. When it's not necessary, we can be as dumb as fucking hell. Well, I'll just start oh fucking programming our own da- ga- damn <laughs> exactly. games. Exactly. Oh, my goodness. So we should censor the internet. Ugh. Same no, thing. It's don't even, nothing. Don't it's, bring that up. Because Kurt said the best thing ever about that. It is the digital version of prohibition. Yeah. And that is spot on. Well, it's true. Censoring the internet is like saying you can't breathe this air around me. It's mine. <laughs> yeah. Everybody has their own pocket of air, sir. You need to you need to either back up. Or reserve the right to someone else's airspace. I mean, well, it, it's it's the internet isn't a tangible thing. You can't no. regulate something that isn't tangible, like air, <laughs> like air. I mean, well, you can regulate air in the way of like you can't be in this airspace, or we're gonna fucking kill you. Yeah, but, but that's that's forcefully pushing. But I mean, like, out. it's it's just it's just not tangible enough to yeah. regulate. It's like saying. Those stars are mine. You can't look at those stars without paying me. You you can buy a star though, and you can name it. Well, yeah, but you can't. Me the fuck you out. don't fucking like that star. Isn't your star? You can't segregate it off. Oh. You can't put a partition up in the sky that says you can't look at this. It's gone now. Just wait because, because I, I bought it. They will. The, uh, you just uh, you can't regulate something that is as intangible as the internet. No, you can try to, but fuck if anyone's gonna pay attention to that shit. Well, th- there will always be, and it's just a stereotype. There will always be the fat soccer Christian mom who's Ooh, out there yeah. to prevent people from living in the real world. Because I was watching this uh, documentary on horror movies. And it was talking to Wes Craven and John Carter, or John Carver, and all the other people, and it was just like when, <clears throat> when the big whole zombie movie and Frankenstein and Dracula, and then even then in the late seventies and eighties, when more horror movies started to come out, and they were getting freakier and freakier and scarier and bloodier and gorier and all that other crap, a lot of people stood up and said, "Well, I don't want this in my theater because." You know, it, it 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 is showing me something that I'm not used to. Well, and that's that's one of the things. Like, I I mean, I was talking with our original band director once. Um, I was borrowing a bunch of music from him, uh, big band stuff. Yeah. And uh, and he was telling me he was like, you know, back in the day, this is what people hated. This is what moms and dads said wasn't right. Yeah. Big that band would, music. That it would drive their children to having sex. Right, or something crazy <laughs> like that. And I'm I'm just like, really? Because damn. Yeah. 
and and but it, everything it, with the progression of shit, it, it, like video games, like <laughs> rock and roll now, like classic rock is just like the thing that's on the radio all the fucking time. But I mean, there was a time when it was like ostracized and. You know, the, the fucking Tipper Gores of the world thought it was the worst thing ever, and now you've got shit like... It's just the way society evolves. Right, I mean, it's just progressively getting more and more... Yeah, with... Well, and it, I wouldn't even say it's getting worse and worse. It's just... We're, we're becoming more accepting. Yeah. I mean, we build up that. a certain But we're not, tolerance. because there's still, right now, like, shit like, you know, rap and cr- stuff where people are talking about killing each other and crap... And that's what the moms are f- bitching about now. N- in the couple of years, there's going to be just a new thing to bitch about. There's always something yeah. new to bitch about. Like, exactly. first, you know, we're bitching about you because, you know, you don't own land. Then we're bitching at you because you're black. Now we're bitching at you because, or then we bitch at you because you're a woman. And that's just the new black person. Now we're bitching at you because you're gay, which is just bitching at you because you're the new woman. But it's been around since the 70s, and that's the thing. Well, and eventually, <coughs> the gays are going to be accepted, and then we're going to find something else to bitch about yeah. and to fucking make a well, second-class citizen. When 9-11 happened, who do we immediately segregate off? Well, right, the Muslims. The Muslims. But, but, I mean, that <laughs> shit wears off. And anybody off, else who was brown, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, well, uh, anybody who's different. It anybody just, wore a towel on their head or worshipped another god that wasn't ours. That was who we. That's who we told ourselves that we should not talk to. And still to this day, because we are still at this imaginary fucking war that's happening, which I'd love to see the statistics on it sometime, because I'm pretty sure that they are far-fetched beyond belief. The imaginary war. 9-11 did not happen. Elves didn't do no drugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but neither did Mick Jagger. Neither did Mick Jagger. Yeah, but Mick Jagger's still alive. <laughs> All right, yeah. But... It's just it. It's getting ridiculous because yeah, we we as a society, the the way we've lived, we have to find the people who are out there who think the world needs to change for their bettering. Will always have something to bitch about. We, us three in this room right now, we live a content life. We've had our fuck ups and we've had shit happen to us that we don't like, but as of right now. Honestly, we just don't care about anything else that happens because anything else that happens, like the the homosexual marriage thing and how it should be accepted, this is just ridiculous. It shouldn't even be a question. It shouldn't be a question because, well, here's the thing. I'm going to use the word again is because then people start to say, well, then should we question our marriage values? Are they not a sacred? No! No, they're not at all. Never will they have been. First off, because if you read in the fucking Bible, you well, can you can kill for, your wife. The the thing that the thing that bothers me the most is that they're trying to make a law that says that gays can't marry based on religion. Exactly. And that that <laughs> upsets me because of the whole separation of church and state thing. I don't care what you say about because you're saying about the sanctity and all this bullshit. That is all religiously based. Exactly. There's never... I and mean, even then... <clears throat> are they how same? many people do you know who hate gays who are also atheist or agnostic? Not very many. But there's still Christians that don't care either. Exactly. My well, thing, thing is... Those are... The, I am, I, I'm not saying that every Christian hates gays. Right. I'm just saying that I don't know a lot of people who aren't Christian who also hate gays. Right. Yeah, we we seem to be in the majority, but... My thing is, United States was found on what? Not Christian values at all. God, it was no. freedom. Free, yeah, exactly. Why are we... That, and, know, well, like, politicians who say, well, the founding fathers would have wanted it to be Christian. Well, actually, if you took the time to read the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution, you would actually notice that they really wanted it to be all about freedom and to be able to do whatever the fuck you wanted to. Exactly. None of our founding fathers... Were religious, none of them. If they, anything, the they founding fathers God. were more founded on the principles of marijuana, <laughs> because that was the, the one of the cash crops: marijuana and tobacco. The fucking, it's <clears throat> it's just insane that it's illegal now. Well, it's not insane. I mean, it totally makes sense why yeah. it happened, but I just think it's ridiculous because <clears throat> we came here for freedom of religion. 
but why are we forcing everyone to follow the same thing? Right. Because well, that's the thing. Well, the 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 Puritans came the over Quakers. here to escape religious oppression to only oppress harder. They were escaping the religious oppression that they didn't want because they wanted to oppress religion differently. Yeah, they wanted. It's like the parents who are forcing for creationism in schools. They are forcing that because they don't think that evolution is a, a, a exact an exact science. They think that because of the word theory, because they think of the word theory, and they think of it when, when their definition of theory is not true. Well, That's then it. then you have to discount. Then you, then we'd have to start not teaching gravity because that's a theory. Or we'd have to relativity stop teaching, of mass. We'd have to stop teaching stuff like plate tectonics because that's just a theory. It's a hard fucking theory that we have spent hundreds upon billions of dollars spending to figure this out. And what have creationists done? What have they fucking... What dime have they spent besides making a museum or two have they actually spent towards the figuring out of their own science? Well, they don't need to figure None. it out because they know it. They they just know it. You can't just obtain knowledge magically. My brain does not just absorb knowledge. I do not sit next to this speaker and know how to suddenly make a speaker. That is not how knowledge works. It is not inverse waves that are sent into my brain. That's how it works That's in called video brainwashing. Games. It's like, oh... <laughs> I can make one of those. It's it, it's not <coughs> well. It's <coughs> ridiculous because it's that same idea that because we're trying to be fair, it's like no, you're not. Because if you were being fair, you would. Because a lot of the parents were fighting about this because I will eventually have to deal with this shit because it's all in the schools. And even though I'm just going to be a band director, it's going to float my direction. Well, if you want your kid to be taught creationism, spend the money to go to a fucking private school or. Just spend the money and teach them yourself. Uh, it's not uh, hard. Honestly. I mean, like, I, I've been in classes with students who just blatantly straight up say, I don't believe a damn thing you're teaching about. So I'm not going to believe it, but I'm still going to learn it and take the tests. Exactly. It's Why can't changing. you just do that? Why can't I mean I don't I'm I don't like the fact of putting the blinders on and just saying no 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 I don't see it I don't hear it I don't believe it. <laughs> well, but I mean that's that's a whole lot better than just going out and like making an uproar about it. And uh, it's just, uh, well, because they think that well, and most of the time it's people who are trying to shelter their children from what they think is right. Exactly. But here's the thing. You should let them go out into the world and make their own decisions no, and become they their can't. own people. You read that comic, How to Suck at Your Religion? Yeah. It's that it, there's a great part where it says tell your, my tell favorite your, like, my favorite color is green. No, your favorite color is purple. But daddy, I don't like purple. I like your No, it's purple. Green. <laughs> their thing is you know. with creationism, they want it to be taught in schools cuz all they teach is evolutionism, I guess. Is well, that what it's called? Were we taught evolution? I yeah. was. That's the only I thing I was taught. Remember. That was the only thing I was taught in yeah. science. Their thing is schools provide knowledge, and then you gather this knowledge and make up your mind. They only exactly. teach evolutionism. That's it. So what they're saying well, is they give the them more info on a different side of things, and then go from there. That's it. But they teach evolutionism. That's it. And that's all there is. But they teach that's you all what they saying. have learned. They have taught you what they have gone out and spent hundreds of but once again my, billions of my dollars my only problem with what you're saying is then we'd have to teach all of the different religious creations yeah. right but that no, and, no no but then but then so then just don't <clears throat> teach any of them because our country well, is but that's Christian the thing now. then you just stick with evolution because that's not religiously based that's scientifically based well and then cuz that's not a <clears throat> Because the the whole thing, the creationisms, they're not hypothesis, they're not theories, they're things that people think is just dead on accurate, and they have no backing of it. By the way, well, they they do. I mean, the Bible. I mean, you say it came from the Bible, it can't be false, you know. But that's the but thing. Whatever. I don't. I don't really. I'm not getting into that. That's not <laughs> what I care about right now. What I'm talking about is that if you want to do creationism, Christianity's version, then you have to do the Muslim version, and you have to do. The Jewish version. Well, that's the same as Christianity. It's well. all from the same book. But you'd have to do every single different versions, and the only one that is 
scientifically acceptable and not based on just speculation. Well, well, I guess you couldn't call it speculation. Uh, not based on religion. The only one that isn't based on religion is evolution. evolution. So well, it's the only one that you could teach with a higher you know, uh, acceptability rate. Because, uh, I mean, if you, uh, how fucking pissed off would they be if they taught a different religion's creationism? Well, they mm-hmm. would be extraordinarily. Because right. this country... It's like, all right, we're not going to teach <clears throat> evolution. We're going to teach the cre- uh, creationism theory of Buddhists. Exactly. This country is like 80% Christians. D- uh, 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 fucking Catholic, Christian, that group. They believe in Jesus Christ, and they believe in God. That is an w- overwhelming majority. That other 20% has to be split up amongst the atheists, which I think there's like 17 or 16%. And then Hindus and Muslims and Jews, those are a smaller fucking percent altogether because they're, if you divide that up, it's like points, point three, point four. But, I mean, I think <clears throat> your church is the one who should be teaching you the religious version of things, and your yeah. school is the one who should be teaching you the scientifically accepted version of things. But that's yeah. the problem. So, if you don't want your kid to believe in evolution... <coughs> then just straight up tell them you don't have to believe in it. Yeah. You don't. You don't have to believe in anything that your school teaches you. You do not. You are not required to believe in it. Yeah. You're just required to understand it. And we, we but the problem is we put such an emphasis on, not us, I should say that the church puts such this big emphasis on the fact that if they're being taught this, that they have to to know it that they have to believe in it which isn't true you don't you don't have to it, believe anything exactly. you don't have to believe that you have bones you really don't you don't have to believe you're a human you, that's what you don't you're not do. that's not what you're required to do in school you're just required to understand it and regurgitate information on a test exactly and even ta- half the time you don't even read the fucking text so what does that matter we high school is but just to drown out i don't for i don't think that any sort of religious anything should be taught through school no i think you should be taught that through church through your wednesday night whatever personal hate that we've had for a while because we've seen the damage that they can do and yes they do a lot of help too they help rebuild communities they help people after disasters and we appreciate that but you cannot just turn your head you you cannot be two-faced about this you cannot have one side be good, and then every now and again turn around and be evil and nasty and mean. You can't do that. As a society, we cannot move forward from that. You know, it's like last night I watched a YouTube video. It was was one of the uh, little clips from Family Guy, and it was two guys. They're, like, standing next to each other, and you can tell it's around Jesus' era because the title of the video is uh, Without Religion, Family Guy. And it's just two guys, and they're like, I like you and have no reason not to. I like you and have no reason not to. Some guy runs up. Hey, did you guys hear about the magic baby that was born in Bethlehem? And then they start stabbing each other for no reason whatsoever. Well, I, I, <laughs> I'm a firm believer in that if there wasn't religion, we would find something else to kill each other over. Uh huh. <coughs> so I don't blame religion for any of these killings or wars or anything. I blame humanity and humans yeah. for it because we just cannot accept differences at all no we can't yeah. and we'll find <laughs> something to hate about the other sky person. cake right. sky cake and sky pie yeah it's an old pat Oswalt joke it's right but so i mean tr- it's it's all it's where we will find something to kill someone for we just that's how we work and well it doesn't fucking matter yeah and whether it's religion <laughs> Or how much oil you've got underneath you, or the color of your skin, or the color of your eyes, or how long your hair is, or how short it is, or how you paint your nails, or how you dress yourself, we will, f- or who you have sex with. We will find a fucking way to get pissed off and kill you. And that's the whole thing. When people say that, when I, when I ask, obviously, religious people, who, and I ask them, I say, do you think society could stand up on its hind legs without religion? And they go, no, I don't think we could. I don't think that our country could be the country it is without religion. Uh, d- that's not true at all, actually. So you're saying the reason Africa's in the way it is is because of the, the fact that it's a godless country? That it's a godless continent, I guess I should say? 
You think that's the reason? Not the fact that their economy's in such a horrible shamble that it's a disgrace. Or corrupt politicians. Or horribly corrupt. Not not even corrupt. It's just fucked up politicians. It, it, it's one politician. Well, they don't even pretend like they're not corrupt. They're just straight up horrible. You know. Ours at least pretend they're not corrupt. Well, then you can say about Russia. <laughs> yeah, they live in a communistic world, but they don't really believe in God. No, they don't. They don't no, they Jesus. don't. Russia's not communism. What are they? Shh. Exactly. <laughs> we don't say th- we don't want to we don't want to have the fucking bastards coming here oh, stabbing us in the throat. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen. Oh, it's gonna happen. <laughs> well, if it does, when tomorrow we, morning when we wake, wake up, up in dead. hell or heaven or wherever we go, then I'll say you were right. I'm gonna wake up as a cricket. <laughs> a cricket. Yeah. I'm gonna wake up as a grass blade, <laughs> and then I'll be the uh, cricket that's eating it. Then I'll come back as a tiger. That that eats crickets. That stomps on crickets. Okay, whatever. <laughs> but I mean, it's just, uh, you know, I usually, as you've said before, we don't really like going on these rants, but really, and, because we do it all the time. <laughs> but we don't we go do. as serious as in depth as we have with this. I mean, the last one we went over that was really in depth was the whole, uh, uh, the Obama Obamacare. That was the only rant. That only lasted for, what, 40 minutes at best? Who cares? I don't know. I don't really give a shit about that crap. Yeah. I can't change it, so what the fuck am I going to do? Well, Bitching we about it's going to do nothing. We can't change this. We can change. We can slowly start to change the way people think. No, you can't. See, then you're just you're just as bad as everyone else by saying change how people think. You can't you it, it, you you can't circumnavigate the logic part of the brain to go straight to the soul. You just you got to accept it. The only thing you can do is accept that they are different and love them for their difference. That's, That's it. The thing. You A can't lot of people you can't, can't do that. Fucking hate Christians because they're Christian cuz then you're not any better than a Christian hating someone because they're not. Right. It's the same thing just yeah. in reverse. You and just I've have to learn a... to accept it and get the fuck over it. Yeah. And I've never, ever had a problem with somebody being religious. I tell people this all the time. Up at Wayne, I tell them it every day. I said, I have no problem with your religion. I have a problem when you start telling me that certain people can't be around you, like homosexuals. The fact that you don't like the group Pride? What the fuck are they doing to you? Are they, coming, are they gay bashing you? Unless they're having sex in your bed while you're trying to go to sleep, just leave them alone. You know, like Louis C.K. said, I'm not trying to eat breakfast and two di- dicks touch right in front of me as I'm trying to eat a bowl of cereal. <laughs> That's not how it goes. <laughs> I, you know, That's what'll happen when you let gay marriage go on. Yeah, There's just yeah. going to be, there will always be gay sex happening right next to you. That's the only thing that scares people. It's the only thing. Nobody will ever, well, the people that do admit it, I give, you know, I'll, I'll, wholeheartedly listen to them but for the people that don't want to admit it that's the only reason why they don't want marriage between two homosexuals is gay sex that's it that that's the only reason (laughs) they can they can cover behind the bits in the bible no that's why i fucking i loved john stewart's explanation of it he was like saying uh if you don't want people if you don't want two guys to get married because you just don't like it you don't have an argument that's yeah. just stupid. But if you don't want two guys to get married because you can't get a boner when you think of that shit, then you've got a valid argument. Exactly. <laughs> then it's like, okay, so it's interrupting your life. But it's not it's not interrupting your life in a bad way either. You know, you can get a boner with Viagra. Just take a little s- s- fucking Cialis pill. You yeah, know, no, I don't know. I just that's not. And even then, it shouldn't affect somebody. Except Certain people say that is the only thing you can preach. Christianity, yeah, but they or preach otherwise. That. But like I said, it how to suck at your religion. What's the first thing on that comic? It says, uh, "Thou shalt not judge unless they don't come to this church. Then you can judge them however much you want." Right. And that's that's ungod forgivingly true. And a lot of people. And a lot of people. And we all do our own Well, judge. I mean, that's something that I remember a lot about the church that I that we used to go to. Is, and, and, and you know, I'd be the first to admit that I was pretty into that shit for a long time. I did a lot through the church. I really did. And I was in a lot of groups there. We, you know, we did the whole confirmation thing. We played yeah. in the band. We fucking did other shit. But, I mean... 
there was just so much bad mouthing of other religions and like well, I, I always remember it. people talking about like well fucking catholics are no better than people who wor- worship pagan gods because they pray to other people than jesus which is like, the dumbest thing i've ever heard of uh, yeah not every church is like that though. no and, and even That's if they the are that is them. their own fucking choice right leave them the fuck alone good god but the yeah. whole thing about it is is that when i went to the church that i went to by myself you know, that was way down. The one that the I went to with you, like, twice, once? I think. I think I went twice. No, it was just once. I, was, uh, there was one sure? time where you actually came in, and then the other time you sat in the car. Okay, yeah. So th- I've been there twice, but one time I didn't go yeah. in. And then the other time you didn't actually show up for service. Shame on you, Gil. God's watching! So, but that's the whole thing. I went to that church with my own... There was nobody forcing me to go. I didn't go for poontang. I didn't go for a religious reason. I went because I was enlightened by the fact that these were nice people. They really were. And I thought that maybe I could... Maybe there's a small fraction of me that actually wants to learn about the life of Jesus Christ and read the Bible. But I went to that church and I went and I... Every every Sunday I went. I didn't miss a Sunday. I even went with them when they went to Michigan. When we went to go build... Uh, we went to go paint and rebuild roofs and build uh, porches, uh, wheelchair accessible porches and all that. We did that, and I did it with a wholehearted glee. I, I, I enjoy doing stuff for people. I really do, and that was fun, and we had fun, and it was great. We met great people. And then, like, a year later, it was like I wasn't even a part of that church. I would show up. Nobody would talk to me. Like, one or two people would say hi to me. And then nobody would ever invite me to sit with them. So I'd sit in the fucking clear back. Because I didn't even care. After a while, like halfway through the second summer I'd been there. Because I had even gone there during the school year. Because it was during our senior year. I went there every Sunday. And that the summer before my freshman year of college, I just stopped going. I stopped caring. And it wasn't religious reasons. It wasn't. Anything else besides the fact that nobody said anything to me. <laughs> and you cannot call yourself a Christian, a God-fearing Christian, when you can willingly go to a church, see somebody sitting by themselves in the clear back, and not say anything to them. Just let them leave. And that's what I did every Sunday. And that's why eventually, like halfway through July, I just, you know, I'm, I, this isn't worth my fucking time. It really isn't. Because it's not, I'm not getting anything. Because I'm just getting pissed off. Right. Uh, so uh, when you you go to church with your family, right? Yep. Just your family, or do you do anything else? What do you mean by that? Like anything outside of Sunday? Sure. Yes. With your family? No. With friends? Kind of. Not at first, but then, yeah, <laughs> obviously they became I'm, I'm friends. I'm trying to see what you're getting at. Uh, well, I'm just... Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> All right. We got this. So so you go to church with your friends. They weren't your friends, but now they are. Yes. You go to church with your family. Yes. You go to church with a bunch of people who make you feel accepted at the church. Yes. That makes it easier to go to church. Yes. But see, That pretty much proves exactly what you're talking about. You didn't feel accepted. But I had people that I knew. Yeah, well, exactly. Because I mean, I that's the thing. He them. goes to church with people that he likes to be around. Yeah. With his family. Yeah. You went to church. Well, that's what I went. Well, that's why I added the likes to be around part of that. Yeah. Because I know they'll. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my I family gotcha, going to church doesn't happen. So. Right. But but what I'm talking about here is is it's a whole lot easier to be into a scene like that when you're feeling accepted. That's the thing. It started out that way. None of the churches I've been to have I ever been like, oh, this is something that I belong to, that I need to do, that fulfills me. It's always been like, this is something that I have to do so I don't go to hell or so I don't piss my mom off. So, which is stupid, right? And that's like that's why I stopped going. Was was just because like I I I just don't think I'm gonna go to hell if I don't go to church. People seem to believe that if you go to church every Sunday. And do all these things, you become a Christian. Just like sitting in a garage makes you a car. <laughs> it's stupid. Yeah. Who, who said that? I don't. I, I don't. I don't I've heard it so many that. times. Yeah. Thank it's you. just stupid. 
works do not help you in that aspect. No, well, right. they help, but, but they're I wasn't not going gonna... to. When I went to this church, I wasn't looking to become a Christian. I was looking to become enlightened, to become to getting to know what they believed in and how they believed in it. And it worked for a little while, and it was not until they just stopped caring. When you stop caring, when you stop trying to help somebody, when you, it's just like halfway through a conversation with talking about somebody who just lost their aunt, and you said, I don't really fucking care, and just walked away. <laughs> How do you think that would leave the person you were just talking to? It would devastate them. It would leave them less than how they felt when their aunt died. So how does it feel when you go to a church with people, with friends that you have worked with, and all of a sudden, it just stops? Yeah. It you just pissed me off. <laughs> but that's not with church. That's with anything. I mean, I'd feel the same way. Yeah. But it, if you're just all of a sudden ostracized and you're that you, guy. Yeah. You yeah. go places where you feel accepted no matter what it is, church or not. If you're not accepted anywhere, you just get pissed off. Yeah, and then you just stop going. You just well, show up if anywhere. it would have started that way, I wouldn't have been as upset. Because I had been there for a year. I had religiously gone to church. Kind of a you know, <laughs> double entendre there. But it's it's that whole idea that, that I belong to that congregation and they should have accepted me as that. And I was looking. That's really the only time I've ever actually sought acceptance. And that's like... Y- y- I don't know about you, but at our church here, I've never really felt... Oh, God, no. Like, I mean, (laughs) I felt like... I didn't feel like they didn't like me. I just didn't feel like... Because I thought differently than they did. Mm -hmm. I had different opinions on religion. Which is also stupid, saying that. Well, it's it's just like... I, I I felt like my ideas didn't match with theirs, so they didn't really care... They didn't want to know the way that I felt. Yeah. They just wanted to just go, no, 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 What I believe is what I believe. No, 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 Yeah. And I was like, okay, fine. I'll let you do that, but I'm not going to come here anymore and sit in this fucking place and just be awkward as hell. Last time I checked, Jesus taught a message of love, not kill everyone who doesn't agree with you about anything right or just ignore them and pretend they're not there and yeah. maybe they'll go away and that just <clears throat> which is what happened i was just like okay it's frustrating goodbye well and the whole reason i mean our church and i'm not saying that they weren't <clears throat> good people yeah sure they're good people i still like them as human beings but <clears throat> on an intellectual level i just cannot agree with no. some of the ideas <laughs> that they have and they couldn't agree with some of the ideas that I had, so that just kind of ruined everything. Like, I mean, I've sat down and had really long conversations with our current pastor, and I love him to death because he fucking he's just like, all right, we have different opinions. Yeah, let's discuss them. And I understand his ideas. He understands my ideas. We understand that we don't agree. And we're done yeah. with that section of things. Now we on. can move on and yeah. talk about, you know, how everything is just okay. It's not a big fucking deal. But then there's other people who are just like, fucking, no. What, you have different ideas? No, you have to agree with me or <laughs> I'm not validated as a human being. Yeah. And I, if you don't agree with me, then, then I'm a lesser person because of it. And I didn't make you agree with it. So I have to kill you. <laughs> That's the well, only way I can be a real man. You know, I, when I went to the church, oh God, I can't even, Prairie, I can't remember the name of it now. But when I went there, I remember everybody was asking me if I would go to Sunday school with them. And I'm like, am I six? <laughs> but I found out it was like the teenage, it was the high school Sunday school. Oh, that's school. another, I even taught Sunday school. I taught Sunday school. <laughs> was I there for it? No. Well, I figured so, because I'm like a... I don't remember this situation happening. I was in charge of enlightening young minds to our version of Christianity. No, I Lutheranism. even went that far into it, and I still I just couldn't do it because I just there were things that that I just totally didn't agree with. Well, and we never, it, uh, uh, honestly, for the times that I paid attention, we never really talked about Jesus Christ at all. 
We talked about Martin Luther every fucking Sunday. Oh, and in Wednesday. I mean, that's all it was about. But yeah. that's because we're Lutheran. And, but that's the thing. And we're the most correct <sighs> religion. Yeah. It's like, okay, whatever. We're the most historically correct religion. There's thousands of religions, and ours just so happened to be the one that was right. Thank God for yeah. that. Woo! I'm glad I didn't wind up in one of those crazy whack job churches who are teaching shit that's just totally off the wall. Thank goodness I wound up in the one that's right. Yeah. And I, then you go to another I church and you're right like, church. wait, they just said the same thing. They said that they're right. So there's two religions that are Have totally Have you heard about correct? the magical baby in Bethlehem? Yeah. <laughs> that's it right there. Is Well, in the church I went to, every Sunday he would say he would have something planned out about how to be a better person that's what i loved about our pastor was that he always had something to say about being a better person it was this is a glimpse from the bible this is how you can incorporate it into your life about being a better person and he was the only person who still treated me with respect after i left that church who still would message me and talk to me that sounds exactly like my church weird yeah i ain't going (laughs) <laughs> don't I'm no done. but that's seriously what we i am so I, I know but i'm done because it's not because this one church ruined me it's because i just i feel nothing anymore i really don't if i went to it i would feel bored and i would feel j- disgusted at myself because i would be trying it's it's like you said it would be like trying to force myself to be a car in the garage i know i will never be it so why do i want to try it that, that just uh, I was, I've done a lot of exploring into alternate. Uh, I I hate calling it alternate religions, but other alternate religions. universe. Well, that's well, that's what it makes you feel like. It's like it's like all right, this is what I am, and this is other things that are wrong. Uh, and uh, but I mean, I've 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 got an aunt who's Buddhist, so I've learned a whole lot about Buddhism. Uh, Buddhism. Bu- yeah, but I mean, every single one, it's like. Love your neighbor. Don't kill him. His wife is his. You can't have sex with her. Okay? That's Christianity. Moving on to Buddhism. Love your neighbor. Don't kill him. Your wife is his. His wife is his. Don't have sex with her. Oh. Don't kill insects. Okay. All right. Now let's move on to Muslims. Love your neighbor. Allahu Akbar! Don't kill him unless he's American. Your wife belongs to you. Only you can have sex with her. Okay. Well, if she is, Whoa, if she... there's something that's weird here. They're all the same. They're just worshiping well, a different dude. Have you read the Quran? It borrows from the Bible. Well, a thousand times. They have very similar, like the their their religion is basically the same, except for like a different prophet treating women like cattle. <laughs> like, well, oh, and Christians in don't. And no, it regular says in people the Quran. don't. It says in the Quran, it's like you, you, women are nothing more than fertile cattle. It, well, it. the fucking Bible says a whole lot of nasty things about women and, like, how they're property. It's also the time period. Exactly. And that's one of the things that pisses me off because they're like, well, if you take it in the aspect of the time, then you you, know, you really can't take it that way. Why but, don't we update the But we still hate gays. <laughs> and we still fucking... Hate blacks. T- whatever. It, yeah. yeah but, it's hmm. stupid. It's like you can't just choose... This one to believe is a time period based one, but this one who is literally a sentence away, that's not based on the time period. I was thinking of period. selling my first daughter into slavery. Anybody else want to buy her? <clears throat> oh, I'll take it. I can How use much? a slave. People I'll just use a quarter. People don't understand context. Except the balloons. The balloons. <laughs> the balloons. <laughs> yeah. Context is important. Time period is important. And being an asshole is important because interpretation. <laughs> I mean, everybody interprets it differently. And the fucking, uh, oh, what is it called when you take one language, transcribing it, translating, another, translation. Yeah, there's a Transcri- lot of things that there's a lot of things that are different between different languages, and the book has been translated so many different times. But with the Mormon book, it's only been translated once. Yeah. And the fucking Scientology <laughs> book was just made up. That's why you need to see that trailer for The Master. It's about Scientology and how it started with L. Ron Hilbert. Oh, boy. Can't and it's wait. got, you know, Joaquin Phoenix. And it's looking good. So you thinking <sighs> of ending this? Yes. Because <laughs> I was thinking it, too. I'm like, I looked at the clock. I'm like, fuck, we need to go see the movie. And there we go. 401. Woo. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good time to end. 
certainly is. So, we have two sections, too, because apparently I stopped recording at one point. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to... Uh, and then we began. <laughs> All right, this has been a Dialectric Media Podcast. I'm Doug Shlobotny. I'm Frank Allen. And I'm Baldwin. Goodbye. Sorry if we Peace. pissed you off. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry if we alienated yeah. one person. We probably pissed audience. a lot of fucking people off. Bye-bye. 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 B